Hey everyone, this is Phil and today, today we're finally going to talk about the Folklander Bessa with the 645 insert. So if you've watched my latest video on the shutter repair for the Folklander uh, Bessa RF, then you already know I had some issues with my camera uh, that brought my efforts to make a video about this uh, function of the camera to a halt. So I've been trying to make a video uh, about the 645 insert in the Bessa RF for the better part of three weeks now, I think. and stuff just kept breaking on me and I had bad weather and I just didn't manage to get enough footage together to make a video. So I have uh, footage from I think three walks through the neighborhood now uh, and a bunch of pictures uh, both from the 6x9 and the uh, 645. So disclaimer, I filmed all of this on my own so uh, there will be very little shots of me uh, actually using the camera but I'm going to do my best to explain to you how it works, how to get that uh, 645 working on the BESA and uh, show you some examples of how it affects the quality of the images. So the BESA RF, this camera, is a uh, 6x9 uh, medium format camera. So it shoots a negative that is 6x9 centimeters large and it used to come with a mask that allows you to uh, convert it into a 645 camera. And if, if you've been watching my videos at all, uh, you, know, you will know that I have been shooting a lot of uh, 645, so I've come to like and uh, really enjoy the format. And uh, I managed to obtain a uh, 645 mask. This, this is what it looks like and uh, was able to use this in my uh, BESA to shoot uh, 645 as well. So let's go over to, to the footage and uh, I will explain some of the uh, factors that you have to keep in mind when you're shooting 645 versus 6x9. All right, so we're gonna put in the uh, mask for a second there and I'll show you how the conversion to the 645 format works. Um, so the mask just slides in between uh, the metal frame and the bellows. And then the film goes on top of that. And you can see um, there's two little protrusions uh, on the mask uh, that go below and uh, above the film. And those actually goes into this little hole here and it activates a lever. Uh, that slides open the second window uh, for the film counter. So as you can see, um, mine only opens half the way and I have to like uh, press down on it to, to get it to this point. Um, but um, that is actually quite enough to see the number. So um, we're just going to advance the film. And now you're at frame one. Uh, you will shoot frame one and then you'll advance the number one into the second window. So um, what you are doing is you are advancing the film only half of a frame. Um, so you can just uh, shoot that vertical frame for the 645 exposure uh, by advancing the film half of the way. And uh, similarly, uh, you also have inside the, shut the viewfinder. So you can see this is at the uh, six by nine uh, normal orientation for the viewfinder right now. And then there's a little knob on top here um, that you can rotate, to give you the six, four, five vertical frame. So one thing that became very apparent very, very quickly, and that is something that I did expect uh, was that the added crop factor uh, made it very different to frame uh, the pictures on this particular lens. So the 105 millimeter lens on the BESA RF is a uh, 45 millimeter uh, equivalent when you uh, consider 35 millimeter film. Uh, however, on 645, it becomes a uh, 65 
mm lens. So um, it definitely crops in quite a bit and I had difficulty uh, framing the pictures in a similar fashion. On the other hand, I find that sometimes having that extra focal length makes your photos more interesting. You will be forced to focus on uh, details within a structure rather than picturing the entire scene, which often makes your photos more descriptive. So for example, the photo of this entire building is far less interesting than just the detail I picked out or these very little minute details of objects in the scene. Now on the topic of depth of field, obviously because of the longer focal length, you will be farther away from your subject uh, while achieving the same framing. So it might be a little harder to get that uh, depth of field or uh, background separation. However, uh, with a 3.5 lens on medium format, I really feel that isn't much of an issue. So on the subject of noise, uh, let's look at these two frames uh, that I've scanned with my digital camera and Negative Lab Pro. Um, these are side by side uh, at the exact same size with the same camera, same settings, everything. Uh, so um, they should give you a good idea of what the grain difference is. So um, we've got a similar area here um, with some light and shadows, and you can definitely tell that the grain is larger uh, in the uh, 645 frame. It's less uh, noticeable because it's smaller in the uh, 6x9, uh, but it's definitely still there. And uh, I do have to say um, a little bit of this is probably due to sensor grain as well, uh, sensor noise as well. Um, that's just the limitations of my camera, I guess. And then uh, if we look at some other uh, areas you can definitely tell there's more uh, grain in overall in the uh, 645 uh, if you look at these mid-tones here um, that's more noticeable here and overall uh, there's a little more grain and more larger grain uh, that's gonna come out more uh, if you have it sharpened by the, your lab if you're getting uh, low rest scans and uh, you can definitely uh, detect a little more of those uh, sharpening artifacts in uh, low res uh, lab scans as well. So that's it for my 645 versus 6x9 video on the uh, Focal Interbesa RF. Uh, I hope you enjoyed some of the images. Uh, it's been a lot of fun shooting with it and also very challenging as I have uh, explained during the video. Uh, so the reduced focal length while interesting is very challenging uh, if you're used to shooting with the 105 or something even wider and uh, It's been interesting to find some cutouts that I can use from the, these uh, images uh, Otherwise, uh, I was not really able to detect that much of a difference in depth of field or loss of detail um, so I very much enjoy the 645 uh, format, but I think I'm going to use the BESA more with the full frame uh, 105 lens uh, because the converted uh, 645 uh, focal length is very, very limited. So another drawback is um, that a lot of my frames uh, would overlap on the BESA uh, and also the reduced uh, viewfinder is very, very hard to frame with. So it's not very accurate. Uh, I find it very hard to, to actually um, properly frame a image with the reduced uh, 645 viewfinder on the BESA. Um, and uh, that has definitely affected some of the shots. So as always, uh, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I got some comments on uh, some of my videos in the last couple of days. Uh, thanking me for uh, creating this content. I, I just gotta say um, I really, really appreciate that you're watching this uh, and I'm having a lot of fun creating these videos. So hearing that they actually meant something to someone who was watching them and uh, that people enjoy them always means the world to me. So 
Um, please keep the comments coming. Uh, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you're inclined to do so. Um, you can hit the unlike button if you didn't enjoy the video. Um, that's fine as well. And, uh, and I will uh, keep creating these videos uh, because it's fun for me to do, but also because I enjoy connecting with people uh, through this hobby that I have a lot of love for. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.